Resin 3D printing is inherently a lot more of a hassle than FDM filament-based printing, but the Hallett X1 actually solves a lot of the issues that I've had with the few machines that I have tested out in the past. Now, I still don't think it's going to replace filament-based 3D printing for me, but this might be something I use more consistently. First off, let's dive into the specs here. It's got a 16K mono LCD screen with a build volume of 211 by 118 by 200 millimeters tall. But the physical design here is what makes it so much different than other consumer grade resin printers. First off, opening up the lid here is simple. The build plate here slides right out. The build plate is two parts of metal. As you twist the sides, it releases your prints. That has been one of the biggest issues with resin printing is having to scrape the prints off of the build plate. It's just kind of a difficult part to have to scrape it off. And then you have little chips of uncured resin flying everywhere. It was very messy. This has been so easy. You crack it off and sometimes a few little squares of supports might have stuck to the build plate, but it's tiny little pieces that fit between the plates. Easy to scrape off. It does come with full auto bed leveling here as well. That was another big issue I have had with other printers. Once they get off of bed level, I found it really difficult to try to learn. It's one of those skills that I'm sure people who do it all the time are really good at bed leveling a resin printer. It's just a lot more difficult than filament based printers. Currently the build plate comes loose right now, but once you start a print, it locks it down in place. So you're not able to remove it while it's printing. The other interesting part here is that the build vat comes up to reach the build plate. The build plate doesn't move down. They say that's more stable to not move the print around while it's printing and instead just move the vat up and down. And there's two screws, so it's really stable moving up and down. The vat also, it has a quick release feature. You pull these two wings out to the side and then the vat comes straight off and you're able to dump it out to refill your bottles. But if you don't want to deal with pouring the resin back into the bottles, you can get this automatic fill unit over on the side here. This both heats the resin and does your automatic filling and emptying of the build vat. Really great now that winter's coming around and I do all my printing in the garage where it is cold. Resin does have an optimal temperature range to print at, so it is really nice that it does that auto heating for you. And another cool feature, it has an RFID tag sensor in there. Similar to how filaments are doing this with bamboo and creality spools, they have their RFID tag in there. And when you load this filament in there, it'll tell you this is a red spool of filament. With this, it tells you which of their Hallett based filaments you're loading in there. So if you load in a different one of their resins, it automatically knows what settings to use. That's just a super neat feature. It does detect how much resin is in the bottle using a scale on there. So it's not locking you out of which brands you can or can't use. I used a lot of Creality and any cubic resins on this printer that don't have those stickers. And it just relies on you telling it what type of resin you've loaded in there. But when you do use theirs, it knows which settings to automatically use. And currently the price of this combo with the printer and the automatic fill unit is only $509 for the November Black Friday sale. I will have some affiliate links in the description down below if you're interested in picking up the printer or the whole combo here. Those affiliate links do help out the channel at no additional cost to yourself. Next up, let's get onto some of these prints because I think that is one of the most important parts of a resin 3D printer. The awesome resolution you can get and just how good these prints look. This is the type of detail you can get on this printer. You can see the layer lines when I'm zoomed in this close, but here's my thumb. It's really undetectable to the naked eye to be able to see these layer lines. And the amount of detail that can show up even on this chain sword here is so cool. Being able to print his face, all the tiny details on the rope, the writing even showing up very clearly on the shield, then around to the back his backpack, the wolves, all the detail showing up is so cool. One difficulty here of resin printing is using the correct settings to minimize issues like this. And it looks so good even with all of these spikes covering the marine, all the details around back, standing on the rocks, getting up super close. This is so cool to see all the detail and these micro scaled layer lines. I find tabletop miniatures like this are a really great way to find cool models with all of these crazy details. This is a church on top of a, I think a Titan from Warhammer 40K. Um, then here's another, here's a dragon guy. 
I don't exactly know what all of these models are. This guy is another super high detail one. The scale and dragon on this shield is so cool. And the fact that I can so easily print out a highly detailed model like this to see his backpack, the vents and everything on there. This was the pre-sliced model that came with the printer and it looks really cool and detailed. Another case of some kind of armor, the shield. The shield is really nice and detailed where you can tell it's like wood, but it has this sword and wings and fires and all these details on top of it. Some other prints I did, this is a latticework benchy, turned out well. This bottom here does show that any bottom surfaces that are touching the build plate will have these lines. That's where that quick release surface is. So most prints you print are going to be printed off the build plate. If it's on the build plate, it'll have surfaces like this. If it's off the build plate, well, if you use bad support settings, it'll look more like this. Here's another classic resin test print. This is the Elegoo little castle. So there's a tiny spiral inside of these steps and letters up on top, totally clear and readable. I did a bunch of test prints. So here's a Prusa test print for resin prints. And it didn't turn out correct with the angles here, um, but I wonder if it's because it's not super level on the bottom there because it was printed on the build plate, not off. I, so not sure what I did wrong here. Some of the supports don't look great. This, but these details do look really good here. So for example, how it was able to resolve all of these text, I guess the point one didn't quite show up up there. All of these spikes turned out so fine and tiny. They are just hair long. Up top here is a grid of different shapes. Some of the finest ones on the far right didn't print correctly. Over here on this side, a 0.1 millimeter line was able to print correctly. So that looks great. And his little happy face printed correctly, looking good. Next up, I printed some Stormtrooper chess pieces. These are by Galactic Armory. It's just a bunch of different clone variations. And they all turned out really good. This guy I did drop on the ground, which does have a big crack on his head. And most of them I did the same thing on the other one as I used the wrong settings basically. So the bottoms of them are not flat. So they don't sit flat on the ground, which is disappointing. And it's something I need to learn and get better with resin printing. I did some larger prints to just see how it would do. Here's a larger scale key. This is a key of Erebor from The Hobbit. And it's cool how it's able to, and at this scale, you just really can't see the layer lines. It's cool that all this really fine Dwarven text does show up on here. This is just really cool to be able to make really large props that feel like it's a injection molded piece, not a 3D printed piece. I also did a large full scale Oni mask. This is another one of at this scale, you can't even tell that it's 3D printed. I printed this one vertically like this. So on the inside, you can see these bumps from where the supports were, but on the outside detailed part, you really can't find any of those support marks. Super cool and awesome. This is a great tool to be able to make pretty large masks like this. This one is a little bit small for my face, but I just incorrectly scaled it before printing. The build volume would be able to print a mask like this that would fit on my face. I'm so impressed with what I was able to make off this printer, but the one downside here that I kept running into is that their slicer isn't the best part of this machine. Specifically, the Hallett box is what they call their own slicer. And it does, I found it crashes when you load in too large of an STL. If there's too many polygons in the file, if you try to slice it, it'll just crash. So I have been using the Chi2 box and this printer did come with a free, a few months of a free subscription to the Chi2 box pro. So I have told them about this issue and hopefully they can get it updated and fixed. But currently the Chi2 box, it does work really well. And talking about the slicer, that is the biggest downside with resin based printing in general, at least for me, they're not as easy to use as filament based printers. For the last several years, if you buy any good filament printer, the default settings, you can just upload almost any STL, hit slice, send a printer, and you will get beautiful prints off of it. With this one, I was trying to use just auto supports. I was trying to do the orienting correctly and the bottoms of these prints just didn't turn out great. 
It's just a learning curve. It's something I know I'm just messing up. I'm not doing it right. So there is this difficulty curve when it comes to slicing things on resin printers that I think isn't there anymore when it comes to filament based printers. So now that we have such awesome resin printing hardware, hopefully this software on that side of things can catch up as well. The next thing I do need to mention on any resin based printer is safety. It is a lot more difficult and dangerous to deal with than filament printing. You could give your filament based printer to a child and they're going to be fine. The worst they could do is burn their finger. If they're using PLA, it's really not releasing a lot of toxic fumes. With resin, you can't touch it with your hands. So you do have to wear a lot of gloves every time you're around this machine. Anytime you could touch the liquid resin, you should probably be wearing gloves. Also, it is a liquid here. So if I tilt the machine too much and pour it out, now I've got toxic resin that's UV curable spilled everywhere. I only do it out in the garage and if I didn't have a garage, I probably wouldn't do resin printing just personally. I wouldn't call myself an expert on it. So I would say just watch some safety videos on how other people deal with resin printing. And that just about wraps it up. Really the build plate and motion system here is something that I haven't seen on any other resin printers and it makes it so easy to use. It makes me excited to print more things on this machine. The resolution that I'm able to get off of here is so cool. The quality of these prints are just incredible. And I think this is finally a good entry point that I would really recommend. If you have been doing filament based printing for a while and you're really thinking about giving resin printing a try, this makes it a lot easier than other machines. But anyway, that just about wraps it up. If you do have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. As always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.